and we're back with phase two. So phase two of the war, the idea is that Iran's going to counterattack and they're going to push Iraq back, you know, to the border. Um, so this will start approximately September 1981, a year after the war started, and will go until the next summer in July of 1982. So the first, the first area that they're going to look at, that we're going to look at, is the land battle. So the Iranians, they're able to score, you know, September 80, 81, they're able to push forward. So they, they're able to, to score some, some victories um, by they're finally able to have their regular army in the Pastoran. So the Pastoran are, you know, the religious fanaticisms. They're the ones that are, are loyal to the clergy, whereas the regular army is loyal to, you know, the government per se. Um, but they're kind of they're more based off of you know the, the the resistance from or they're the the remnants of the Shah's army, so they're going to be able to to mix together. This is kind of for the first time where they're going to to be together and push forward. Um, so they're going to use um, their first victories. They're going to be at Abdan and Boston, where they're going to to push forward. And these are going to be some of the first instances where they have human way of attacks, where they just send infantry and say, you guys, you know, push until you either die or succeed, you know, run until something happens. And this is going to be one of the first instances where instead of using tanks or, or air support, they're just going to have the infantry run. And this is what's going to happen. And they were able to have some success. However, it was at a huge cost, you know, this brutal hand to hand combat, um, and there's going to be large losses on both sides. You know, so here's some pictures of the Pastoran. So this is like the, the revolutionary guard. They're the people loyal to the Shah. They're religious fanatics, you know, the key to heaven, you know, these guys. Continuing on with, with another operation uh, or another offensive, the Iranians also had the offensive called Fath. So Fath is going to be their offensive where they're going to try to retake the holy city of Khorm Shar. So they have, you know, the Iraqis were able to take the city during the initial attack. And they're going to take, they're going to, to counterattack. And they're going to, you know, double the troops and they're going to use the human wave of attacks. So even though the Iraqis, they're entrenched, they have defensive positions. They're just going to attack with human after, you know, human wave after human wave. And they're going to eventually overtake the Iraqis and make the Iraqis push out of Khorram Shar. However, it was at a heavy cost. You can only imagine the number of people you're running to overtake the city and the number of deaths that that creates. So here's a couple of images from the Battle of Khorram Shar. It's, you know, city fighting. So you have defensive positions within the city, but eventually the Iranians are able to overtake it. And it's you know, a, a huge moral victory for them because, it, like I said, it was a religious city. So they have that going for them. Um, within the air, Iran, if you remember from the causes of the war video that we talked about, Iran having um, the better the better air force. They have the better planes. They have better pilots, you know, well-trained pilots who are able to risk themselves. But they have the limited aircraft. So they have to pick and choose their spots. So one of the ways that they did this is they went up through Syria and they attacked a defensive air base that's kind of on the other side of, on the western side of Iraq, away from the border. So the Iraqis, they were not suspecting this at all. So what the Iranians do is they, they get the Syrians to allow them to use Syrian airspace um, through some, you know, some backroom trade deals and whatnot. So they're allowed to go up and through Syria and come around and attack this H3 air base. Um, and they have huge success because the Iraqis were definitely not ready for this. So they take out a bunch of Iraqi bombers. They take out technicians who are servicing airplanes. Um, and they have absolutely no losses. So it was a huge you know, air success. Um, and one of the ways that this happened, one of the things that this did is it showed some loyalty to the campaign. Because if you remember the, the Ayatollah Khomeini, they're suspicious of the Iranian Air Force because the Air Force was you know, fiercely loyal to the Shah. 
and they're kind of they think if anybody is going to have a coup, it would be the Air Force. So this showed loyalty. However, um, you know, a couple months later, the president Bandi Sadar, who's the secular president, he's the non-religious guy. Um, it was proven that he might have been bribed by the CIA in the United States for information, and therefore he was forced out. He was. Um, he was able to escape to France where he had connections. And if you remember the Ayatollah Khomeini had actually um, been in asylum in France for a long time. So there's kind of this Iranian connection in France. So um, what this did is it created the Ayatollah scurrying for power, which we'll see more of later um, where you'll see the Ayatollah Khomeini on the top. And then you have uh, Rafa Shani and, and another one who are, who are kind of up in power. However, this escape was aided by the Air Force, and this also be, this became the the religious leaders region to purge the Air Force. So what they do is they they take pilots, they they kill them, they you know execute them, they put them in prison, they you know threaten their families if they don't cooperate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And additionally, whenever they are allowed to fly, they're only given limited fuel, so that they're not allowed to you know, take a detour and go and go to go and surrender in Syria or something like that and ask for amnesty or, and they're also given limited munitions. They're only given, you know, the missile that they need for that particular mission. Um, so that means that if they need to, to fight harder than they really needed to, then they don't really have the ability. And the reason the, the government did this is that they're worried about, you know, the, the pilots, you know, with a coup. They're worried about pilots potentially coming and attacking Tehran. So that's what they're worried about, but it really just backfires on on the operational ability of the Air Force. Like he, like we mentioned with the Sea Theater a little bit ago, um it's you know not really anything has has changed. Um the, there's very few tankers actually being attacked. Um and neither side is really being micromanaged by the leader. So it's you know there's not really a whole lot going on. Every once in a while, there will be an attack, but it's not enough to really stop anything. So we'll stop there and we'll move on to phase three with the next video.